getting people in the EU to buy into the European dream, particularly in the midst of the current economic crisis, is proving difficult. But despite resistance, the EU's Justice Chief and Vice President of the European Commission, Vivian Redding, believes that Europe will need the involvement of its citizens to survive. Vivian Redding, Vice President of the European Commission, welcome to Euronews. Thanks for joining us. I'd like to start with the four-month consultation that has been launched by the European Commission. The stated aim is to find out what problems people face in the EU. You said the feedback you get will go directly into forming policy in the next few years. But given the existential crisis facing Europe at the moment, what do you realistically hope to achieve with this initiative? Europe is our common house. And it cannot be built uh, only by politicians who then, when they have finished the building, say, oh, please, citizens, would you like to move in? We have to build that together with the citizens. And I think that one of the problems of the past was exactly that we never asked citizens what they think about Europe, about their common house, about their living together with other uh, people, uh, the 500 million. And it is high time that we change this. Wouldn't you accept that it doesn't go anywhere near to addressing the big democratic deficit that currently seems to be lying in the heart of Europe? But, look, the democratic deficit is that citizens so far have the impression, rightly or wrongly so, that they have never been asked their opinion. So it is high time to start this and to build this up. These are the first steps because uh, now uh, we will have a whole year of consultation uh, on the spot, in the cities, in the villages. Mm. And then we will have the European elections where citizens are again asked to elect directly their Europarliamentarians, but this time knowing why they are electing them. Th this is all very well, but it's going to take time and the problem that Europe is facing in, at the moment is it seems to be running out of time doesn't it? That is why we start now at once so that when comes European elections they will know why they vote for this person to represent them with this idea in a reinforced European you, Parliament and yeah, you see... If, if uh, I may interrupt you, you yeah. know very well that the uh, turnout at European elections has dropped every year that there's been, every time there has been European elections. People don't connect Absolutely. with the European Parliament. Absolutely. The European Parliament has an immense power to uh, represent the European people and people don't know it. So the implementation of the voters, of the citizens into this new Europe is very important and that's why I'm so happy that most of the answers which we got now, the big majority, people under the age of 30, we have to reconnect them with their future and their future is being built now with them, I hope, and not without them. But when you see the situation across Europe, the rise of extremist parties, parties like Golden Dawn in Greece, doesn't it worry you that the fact is that there isn't enough democracy, people don't feel that Europe is accountable anymore and that's why they're turning to these parties? And that is exactly why we have to give an answer. But this answer cannot be a theoretical, it cannot be promises. This answer has to be very down to earth. It has to be that the politicians are going out and they are listening to the people, they are discussing with the people, they are explaining are they to listening? the people. Uh, that is exactly what the European Year of Citizens is about. But we have to start it. And this is a starting point of getting this involvement and the feeling of belonging and of responsibility because people are desperate when they turn to extremists and to populists because they feel they are not heard nobody is taking account of what they believe and that is the reason why we have to go out there and we have to listen to them and we have to show them that yes we take account of what they believe of what they dream of and of the Europe they want to construct together with I'd like to finally turn to Rumi Romania, how concerned are you about the current political turmoil that's taking place in the country? Very much so. And the whole Commission is. 
and uh, the whole council is. And you have seen uh, the reaction, which was uh, very clear. Uh, democracy is a good which needs to be preserved. We need independent courts. We cannot dismantle um, uh, constitutional courts. Mm. And we have to respect what those courts say. What can Europe really do to make uh, Prime Minister Victor Ponta stick to his promises? Well, I think a lot has happened. Alone the fact that uh, the uh, constitutional court could render its um, decision, and that this decision was applied. We have, I think, blocked the deviations. Things are quiet now. Things are not perfect, but at least they didn't go completely to an extreme. It's not quite clear whether Prime Minister Victor Ponta really is listening. <laughs> He's a Prime Minister of a normally elected government. He has to play his role as a Prime Minister. Every democracy, whoever political party is in power, has to respect the democratically uh, constitutional uh, setup of a country. And that is what we were working for. And I'm very glad to see that the whole Commission, the Council of Ministers and the European Parliament all united their voice in order to say, no, democracy is a holy good and it has to be preserved, whoever is in charge. When you look back, don't you think it was a mistake to let countries like Romania join the European Union? The Europeans took an historical decision. When Europe's divide was eliminated and when those who had lived under the communist dictatorship came back to freedom and independence. We told them before, our door are opened. Democracy is not an easy endeavor. Many of us uh, in old Europe had uh, decades in order to learn how democracy functions. Uh, some of the newcomers um, learn democracy by doing in some years only. We have to help them, we have to give them a chance. Europe is a democratic uh, organization. So Europe could live with a dictatorship within it? No. I do not believe that. Europe could not do that. One thing is very clear. Europe is a democratic state, a state of states, and this will continue and will be reinforced. Commissioner Redding, thank you very much. You're welcome.